Today's episode is brought to you by Skillshare. I woke up the other day in hot sweats and not because I had an erotic dream about owning multiple Leica M cameras, no. I needed to know what Ektar 100 looked like if I pushed it to 800. Yeah, that is three stops. And you might be asking yourself, why, what is wrong with you? To be honest, I have multiple backs for my Mamiya 645 and I just wanted to do something with that. So you get an episode out of it. And today we will be exploring the Getty. In the past, I've only been to the Getty Villa and I assure you, there is a difference. Different YouTube channels, different artistic styles, they're different people, okay? <laughs> they're, they're different. I was so hoping to get some of that sexy Getty golden hour look. Oof, the epic location. Mwah! So Lauren and I packed up my Honda Civic and headed out west. Kind of sounds like a, a Western. But before we take a bath in some beautiful art, we decided to have lunch by the beach. This shot taking in full frontal sun rays doesn't seem to have a lot of differences between the two, but you can see a shift in the color saturation on the sand. It also has a hint of magenta. This will become more apparent later. See, in the past I've had a rough relationship with Ektar. For some reason, I kind of just hated it. There's no sugar coating that churro. Mm. But looking back at some of my past images, I'm not sure why. They aren't all that bad. And now I can safely say Ektar is one of my favorite film stocks. It's known to be pretty saturated, overall bringing that extra pop to the image. It's pretty great for landscape work, which I end up doing a lot of. Some people end up saying that Ektar isn't good for portraits and you should stick to portrait for that. But I have to disagree. This photo of Lauren is divine. The skin tones look wonderful. So I don't know what they're saying. That's the one that's closed, right? Now, if you haven't heard of Pushing Film before, or it's been a second, let me refresh your memory with an older video of mine. What the hell is Pushing Film? How do you do it? And what's the meaning of life? Pushing Film, it's an intentional process that you shoot and develop for. First step, underexpose your film for the number of stops that you want to push. One stop, two stops, or three stops. Second step, develop your film for longer. Don't forget to tell the lab, because you're underexposing your negative, you want to keep it in the film soup for longer to bring out all the details in your image. Now that we're done with the SparkNotes version of this lesson, let's get back to it. This shot is a really good example of what happens when your shadows are hardly visible while shooting at box speed. This push image crushes the ever-loving detail out of them, making them black and blue. Kind of like my face after the car accident I had. Bullshit, I have fake teeth.
Fine. This shot here is maybe where you see the most dramatic differences. First, these people had to sit right down and ruin the image completely. It's not about you guys, okay? Gotta move on. But as you can see, contrast across the board is different. One thing that pushing Ektar seems to do is introduce an ass ton of blue into the shadows. It also cranks up the saturation and changes the luminance of the sky. But what's happening here is more than just a mere crank on the contrast and saturation sliders. Pushing film overall really seems to affect the shadows the most. I think the use of the 45 millimeter lens here at the Getty was wonderful. The wide angle lens really makes this place feel grand. When looking at this photo, the differences are almost negligible. Sure, they're there, but only kind of like that mole on your butt. You really don't notice it, but go get it checked out too. But before we move on, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community that can offer you oodles and oodles of different classes. Classes that help teach you a new skill or two. And with new classes being launched every week, they have tons to choose from. Recently, I found this class called Designing a Series of Movie Posters in a Collage Technique by Sophia and Senya. I love creating movie posters for my films, and this helped me think outside of the box. And the great thing is that there are no ads, and the entire catalog is now available in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German subtitles. For the first thousand people who use the link in the description below, will receive a one month trial to Skillshare's premium membership. So what are you waiting for? Let's go learn some stuff together. Going to the Getty for the first time was magic. Riding that tram to the top was so much fun. And forget about the views. Planning our trip to be there around golden hour was definitely the right choice. Pat on the back, Caleb. You did a good job. That night, after coming back home from an exciting and much needed day out, I had two last shots to burn. So I set up some lights and went to work. I mean, this cauliflower just looked way too good not to shoot on film. You also notice in a few of these pushed images that the midtones have a tendency to push the more magenta side. While looking back at these images and the other roles that I pushed in the past, I noticed that there's a pretty big difference in pushed 35 millimeter film versus 120 film, regardless of the film type. To state the obvious, 35 millimeter has more grain than the larger 120 negative. So when you end up pushing your film, the grain gets accentuated. Ektar at box speed is very clean and almost grainless. And even when pushing it, it stays that way overall. Sure, you get the extra saturation, contrast, and some color shifts, but not so much in the way of additional grain. Hell, if you want, you should push it to 3200, but that may crazy talk. Or is it? I'm really happy with the images that I got at the Getty. This place is stunning. I think one of my favorite images is the one of the tram getting ready to depart in both pushed and box speed. Overall, I don't think I'd push Ektar again. And mostly because I love the results at box speed. I'm not really looking to bake blue into the shadows, but it's nice to know that if you're hung over and forget to change your internal light meter from last night's 800T, this film would hold up quite nice. Well, let me know in the comments below if you ever plan on pushing Ektar like this or what you thought of the results. Well, that'll do it for me today. Catch me next time where I'll finally get the espresso grinder setting right and take a ton of photos doing it. Okay. Bye. <laughs>